Hi friends, it's Kelly. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here today. I will be doing a June wrap up of everything I read and I'm going to do a similar format to what I did last month where I am just going to be telling you as I finish what I read and just giving you my impressions right then so you will get to see that. And without further ado, let's get started. Good morning. It is June 20th. Yesterday was Father's Day and Juneteenth was yesterday. Um, is being reserved today in the United States. So happy Father's Day to all of you that celebrated yesterday and so thankful that Juneteenth is finally a national holiday. Um, I just wrapped up last night the um, the Reckoning at Gossamer Pond by Jamie Jo Wright and it was pretty good. The overarching theme was um, grace and that you can't earn grace and that it has to be given by God and by others. So you can't just like earn it. So, but it was a mystery thriller that had those underarching themes. And we have a dual timeline, 1907, the girl Libby and in present day Annalise, and they both have secrets and there are people that are trying to kill them both. So it is very, um, it was very good. I thought that there were some good twists there. There were a couple things that I guess, but there was a couple things I was surprised about. So I've moved on to just allergies, not COVID. <laughs> um, I've moved on to The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And I got stalled in my reading of um, The Bronze Beast, which is the last in the Gilded Bull series. And um, because I, they love library app took it back, I've got it on hold on a library that I will be able to get it from tomorrow. In the meantime, hopefully I'll be able to listen to some of it today because I do have the audiobook from the library app that I just, one I wanted to read with my eyeballs. So uh, hopefully I'll get that back soon. And um, that's kind of what I've got planned coming up the rest of the month. I hope that you are doing well. Bye-bye. So you're seeing me in my bathroom again. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I just finished a book called Strength Training Over 50. Yeah, I'm not 50. Um, I am trying to keep my credentials up for when my kids are grown and I can train and teach a little bit more. And so they were the cheapest um, continuing education credits that I could get <laughs> for nine hours that I needed. So if anybody wants a book recommendation for strength training over 50, I'm your girl. I, I can I can tell you the author and all that. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put the picture up, but I thought you might be interested to know I completed that book. All right, have a great day, bye-bye. Hello there, I just finished The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne and I really enjoyed it. It took me like some classic books a little bit to get into it just because it's such different language than what I'm used to and I definitely had to look some words up. So the story is following, there's this house of course with seven gables and a sister is living there with just one tenant that's living one and one gable and he, that tenant ends up being very important to the story. But um, she has kind of a gentle poverty upon her. She lives in this great big house but has no money. And her brother um, has been away for reasons that are very painful to her. And there is a cousin that is a big judge guy in the family that she feels has a lot to do with him being away. Suddenly, another cousin comes that is very sweet, kind, young, and just a lovely person. And she comes and she helps make this family feel whole, then the brother comes back from where he's been and he has had a really hard time. He's kind of mentally not 100% stable. So we see the interconnectedness of all these family members and the joy that like this beautiful young cousin brings new life into the older cousins that have really struggled and had a lot of hardships. And so it's just a story about what happened in the past, what's happening now. I don't want to give too much away. There was a romance that I wasn't like 100% on board with. There in the past, there had been some sort of curse um, that had maybe come upon the family and we would learn a little bit about that. And the family that, that this family that inhabits Seven Gables had been very, wronged another family and how that still affects them in this day. I like how the story wrapped up. A big theme is that you will reap what you sow, which I feel like I've read a lot of books like that, or that is a big 
theme lately um, that a lot of times you will eventually get repaid for evil in the end. So there, yeah, there was a strange romance that I was like, ooh, a little iffy on. It's so funny. I discussed with another uh, booktube lady um, from Book Zealots a little bit about this, and she had mentioned the same thing that she thought it was mm, maybe not sure about the romance. So I, I'm definitely on board with her opinion on that. But I would give it a try. It was definitely a much different feel than the Scarlet Letter, but it the narration almost felt like somebody gossiping about this family while you were reading the book. So interesting read. I would pick it up if you would like to try a classic. Have a great day. Hello, it's Sunday the 26th. I'm getting ready to leave the house, but I wanted to let you know real quick that I uh, finished The Girl with the Whispering Shadow, which is the second book in the Crowns of Crosswalk series by D.E. Knight. This is a series that very much leans heavily on the concept that you are a scrivenist who has a pen who, that can make magic and the royals have, have the ability to use stones to make magic. It's a very sweet middle grade series. I really enjoyed the first one. I can't tell you much about the second one without giving away too much in the plot. I just wanna say I really enjoyed it. There was one scene that I did not enjoy that actually I felt like characters that usually protect our protagonists were not doing a job. But other than that, I really liked it. Hey friends, what's up? I am in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> I have finished um, the Bronze Beast by Roshana Chakshi and it was a wonderfully epic conclusion to the Gilded Wolf series. I really enjoyed it a lot. I felt like you had this interconnectedness in the characters that even when they weren't getting along, you knew how much they cared about each other. I felt like it showed that the found family trope is the best trope. I felt like you really got a sense of why their magic system is important and why it is not important. I felt like we had a pretty good bad guy. I really love how it wrapped up in a beautifully bittersweet, wonderful way. So this universe, you have forged people that, um, people that can forge and they can create magic. Some people may be able, one of the characters is able to make fire and she is a neurodiverse character. She's really great. One of the characters is able to touch the forge object and kind of get the history behind it and the feeling behind it. We have some characters that don't have any abilities other than the fact that they're very cunning and smart. I feel like it was a good series. It definitely has similarities to Six of Crows in that there's heists happening. There are some characters that are a little bit cagey about relationships and that the found family trope is there. I feel like it's different enough from Six of Crows that it, it is, it's its own creature, even though there are similarities. So I'd say give it a try. And I am so thankful that I read this series. Okay, I hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye. Hi friends, my last book of June was Introverted Mom by Jamie C. Martin. And it was really good for me because I really struggle with being a bit of an introvert and how that affects you as a mother. And you want to definitely give your children all the time and attention you deserve. I thought this had some good tips and tricks how to handle that and create some quiet in your own environment. Some of it was a little unrealistic because, you know, kids. But I really liked how I felt like I wasn't so alone in this. And in this book, she uses some authors um, that are just like known to be introverts and examples of some quotes they said that were fun. And so like Ellen Montgomery, um, people like that, Louisa May Alcott. Um, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it that I got to like think of all these authors that I really love and their introvertedness. And it was just, it was just a fun, good read for the end of the month. I'm not a big nonfiction reader, but I'm trying to get better about um, reading books that will be an encouragement to me and that hopefully I can um, share to give an encur be encouragement to others. This was a very distinctly Christian worldview. So if you're not a Christian, you probably would not enjoy it. So I just wanted to put that out there and I will see you in July. Friends, thank you so much for watching today and I hope that you will subscribe and like and comment so that I can interact with you. And as always, I hope that you read a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.